Hi and welcome back. This is Thomas. We're working on trigonometry. We're looking at our third trigonometric function. We've seen y equals sine x, y equals cosine x. Now let's move on to y equals tangent x. y equals sine x and y equals cosine x look quite similar to each other. We'll see a quite different graph when we're looking at y equals tangent of x. We're going to look at a range between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. And at negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, we're going to have vertical asymptotes. And our graph is going to move up and to the right, close to but not touching negative pi over 2, going through 0 and then close to but not touching pi over 2 and we can evaluate two inputs function of negative pi over 4 and recalling that tangent of angle is sine of angle over cosine of angle we can evaluate the sine and cosine values at negative pi over 4 sine is negative root 2 over 2 and cosine is positive root 2 over 2. Thus negative root 2 over 2 divided by positive root 2 over 2 gives us a tangent value of negative 1. Now let's evaluate tangent where we see one of our asymptotes pi over 2. And using the same methodology let's evaluate sine over cosine. The sine value at pi over 2 is 1. And the cosine value at pi over 2 is 0. Here we see we have an undefined number. Thus, we have an asymptote at this point because there is no value on the curve for pi over 2 as an input. The denominator of that value is 0. Thus, the output is undefined. And now with this basic example we can look at the general function for tangent which is y equals a tangent bx plus c. Now in the case of tangent there, there isn't an amplitude. We can see in the example on the left that there are unlimited positive and negative y values. There, there isn't an amplitude that we apply to the tangent function. But there is a period, and period is pi over b, not 2 pi over b as we saw with sine and cosine, but pi over b for tangent. And then our vertical displacement or the principal axis is the value c. So let's evaluate the function y equals 2 tangent 1 half x minus 4. Now notice I do have an a value. It's simply not an amplitude measurement, but there is an a value in this function, the value of 2. Now our observations, let's calculate period period is pi over b, in this case b is 1 half, so period is 2 pi. We have vertical displacement going down, the principal axis is minus 4, and we will graph based on these factors. Now since my period is 2 pi, Instead of a range of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, my range is going to be for one complete period, negative pi to positive pi. And my principal axis is minus 4. I'll indicate my x-axis as well. y equals 0. And for one period, beginning at negative pi and going right and then up to get close to but not touch pi. 
So notice I have vertical asymptotes at negative pi as well as at pi. And this is a graph of y equals 2 tangent 1 half x minus 4. The period is doubled to 2 pi and the vertical displacement results in a principal axis of negative 4. Let's evaluate two inputs function of negative pi over 3 and function of pi over 4. Function of negative pi over 3 2 times tangent of 1 half times negative pi over 3 minus 4. My resulting output in the calculator is approximately negative 5.155. And then looking at the input pi over 4, 2 times tangent 1 half times pi over 4 minus 4 which when I evaluate in the calculator is an output of approximately negative 3.172 and I'll mark these inputs and outputs on our graph starting with negative pi over 3 on the x-axis and then identifying the point on the curve which has a y value of negative 5.155 and for the x value of pi over 4 first on the x-axis and then on the curve with a y value of negative 3.172 these are the inputs and outputs for our evaluated values for y equals 2 tangent 1 half x minus 4. This is the tangent function. We've looked at the basic form y equals tangent of x as well as the general form y equals a tangent bx plus c. And the general form enables us to evaluate tangent functions with a variety of characteristics. This concludes trigonometric functions. We've looked at cosine, sine, and tangent. Be sure to practice these concepts with practice exercises, and I'll see you in the next lesson.